Lynn Parsa is indicated for the maintenance treatment of adult patients with deleterious or suspected deleterious germline or somatic BRCA mutated, GBRCAM or SBRCAM, advanced epithelial ovarian, fallopian tube, or primary peritoneal cancer, who are in complete or partial response to first-line platinum-based chemotherapy. Select patients for therapy based on an FDA-approved companion diagnostic for Linparza. Select safety information. Serious and potentially fatal adverse events included myelodysplastic syndrome, acute myeloid leukemia, MDS-AML. Monitor patients for hematological toxicity at baseline and monthly thereafter. Discontinue if MDS-AML is confirmed. Pneumonitis. Interrupt treatment if pneumonitis is suspected. Discontinue if pneumonitis is confirmed. Venous thromboembolism, VTE, including severe or fatal pulmonary embolism, PE. Monitor patients for signs and symptoms of venous thrombosis and PE. Hepatotoxicity, including drug-induced liver injury, DILI. Evaluate bilirubin and transaminases at baseline and throughout treatment with Linparza. For patients who develop abnormal liver tests after Linparza, monitor more frequently for liver test abnormalities and clinical signs and symptoms of hepatic toxicity. If DILI is suspected, interrupt Linparza. If DILI is confirmed, discontinue treatment. Advise patients of the potential risk of embryo-fetal toxicity and to use effective contraception. Most common adverse reactions, greater than or equal to 10% in clinical trials, as a single agent were nausea, fatigue, including asthenia, anemia, vomiting, diarrhea, decreased appetite, headache, dyskusia, cough, neutropenia, dyspnea, dizziness, dyspepsia, leukopenia, and thrombocytopenia. Hello, I'm Dr. Sharon Lewin, Director of Gynecologic Oncology at Holy Name in Teaneck, New Jersey. I am also an assistant clinical professor in the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai Hospital, New York, New York. Thank you for joining us today. In the time we're here together, we're going to review the primary analysis from the pivotal SOLA-1 trial. We'll also review the five-year progression-free survival follow-up data from this key study. And then lastly, we'll talk about the pre-specified descriptive seven-year interim overall survival analysis. SOLA-1 was a phase three randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial, which looked at Limparza maintenance as monotherapy for women with advanced ovarian cancer following frontline therapy. To review some of the key eligibility criteria, all of the women in this study had advanced ovarian, primary peritoneal, or fallopian tube cancer. They had to have a germline or somatic BRCA mutation. Following platinum-based chemotherapy, they had to be in a complete or partial response, and then patients were enrolled regardless of surgical outcome. These women were then randomized in a two-to-one fashion to Limparza tablets, 300 milligrams twice a day or placebo. Treatment was continued with Limparza for up to two years or until disease progression or unacceptable toxicity. Patients who remained in complete response received a maximum duration of two years of therapy, but those patients who had partial response and were thought to be responding to Limparza were able to continue beyond two years. The primary endpoint was investigator-assessed progression-free survival, and key secondary endpoints included overall survival, PFS2, and quality of life are listed on the screen. Let's begin by reviewing the results of the primary analysis and post hoc five-year follow-up analysis on the screen. In the primary analysis for the primary endpoint of PFS, the median PFS had not yet been reached with Limparza, and in placebo was almost 13.8 months. This translated to a hazard ratio of 0.3, so essentially a 70% risk reduction in progression or death by having Limparza as maintenance following frontline treatment compared to placebo, and this was statistically significant. Following the primary analysis, there was a post-hoc five-year follow-up analysis. The median progression-free survival for Limparza was 56 months, so almost five years compared to placebo in the gray line at the bottom. The median PFS for placebo was 13.8 months, or basically 1.2 years. So, at five years, approximately half of the patients who had been treated with Limparza were progression-free 
compared to only 21% with placebo. The analyses at five years is based on Kaplan-Meier estimates and is descriptive only. The SOLO1 trial was not designed to assess a statistical difference between treatment groups at this time point. This visual shows the pre-specified descriptive seven-year interim overall survival analysis. As you see here, at 38% data maturity and a little over seven years of follow-up, the median overall survival has not yet been reached with Limparza and was 6.3 years with placebo. And then you can see here the survival at the 60-month mark and then again at the 84-month mark. This analysis is based on Kaplan-Meier estimates and is descriptive only. Some of the select adverse reactions that occurred in 10% or more of patients who received Limparza in SOLA1 are shown on the screen. The light blue and gray bars show the incidence of all grades, whereas the dark blue and gray bars show grades three and four. And as you can see here, the majority of adverse reactions with Limparza were grade one and grade two. The most common adverse reactions that we saw in SOLO1 were things like nausea, fatigue, and abdominal pain. Laboratory abnormalities that were seen in 25% or more of patients on Limparza versus placebo are illustrated here. The most common laboratory abnormalities seen would be things like decrease in hemoglobin, a slight increase in the mean corpuscular volume, and a decrease in leukocytes. It is important that any of the hematologic toxicities from chemotherapy resolve prior to starting Limparza. You do want to check a baseline complete blood count prior to starting Limparza and then monitor patients with monthly CBCs thereafter. Some of the adverse events of special interest that are noteworthy for the primary, five-year, and seven-year analyses are illustrated on the screen. You can see the rates of MDS and AML as well as the rates of primary malignancies and pneumonitis from the Limparza treated group versus placebo. As of the seven-year analysis, the rate of MDS-AML was 1.5% in the Limparza arm and 0.8% in the placebo arm. Subsequent to this, an additional case was reported in the Limparza arm based on an updated analysis bringing the total to five cases, or 1.9%. The rate of primary malignancies at the seven-year follow-up analysis was about 5.4% with Limparza and 6.2% with placebo. For pneumonitis or interstitial lung disease, the rate has remained constant since the primary analysis with 1.9% with Limparza and 0% with placebo. At the seven-year follow-up analysis, there were no new safety signals, and the safety profile remained generally consistent with the primary and five-year analyses. Looking at Limparza dose modifications due to adverse reactions in SOLA1, three out of four patients did not require a dose reduction, and nine out of ten patients remained on Limparza without any treatment-related discontinuations. Overall, the discontinuation rate was about 12%, with dose reductions at 28% and dose interruptions at 52%. At the seven-year follow-up analysis, we can see that there were some dose reductions as well as some dose interruptions. However, the discontinuation rate still remained at only about 12%. NCCN guidelines recommend single-agent olaparib as a maintenance therapy option for certain patients with advanced ovarian cancer who are in partial or complete response after surgery and first-line platinum-based chemotherapy and have a germline or somatic BRCA1 or 2 mutation. This is a Category 1 recommendation for patients who did not receive bevacizumab-containing primary chemotherapy. Overall, for my clinical practice, the SOLO1 trial really changed how I treat my patients with germline and somatic BRCA-mutated advanced ovarian cancer. In the primary analysis, the median PFS was not reached with Limparza versus 1.2 years with placebo. At the post-hoc five-year follow-up analysis, almost half of the patients who had been treated with Limparza were progression-free compared to only 21% with placebo. When we're looking at the interim median overall survival, the pre-specified seven-year descriptive analysis, at seven years, 67% of patients were alive with Limparza compared to 47% with placebo, 
and the median overall survival in the Limparza treated group has not yet been reached compared to 6.3 years in the placebo group. The five-year PFS follow-up analysis and overall survival analysis are based on Kaplan-Meier estimates and are descriptive only. Most adverse reactions were grade one and grade two, and the most common adverse reactions were things like nausea, fatigue, abdominal pain, vomiting, anemia, and diarrhea, which in my experience are very tolerable and well-managed with appropriate counseling. Next, we will review the important safety information for Limparza. Important safety information. Contraindications. There are no contraindications for Limparza. Warnings and precautions. Myelodysplastic syndrome, acute myeloid leukemia, MDS, AML, occurred in approximately 1.2% of patients, 26 of 2,219, with various BRCAM, GBRCAM, HRR gene mutated or HRD positive cancers who received Linparza in clinical studies as a single agent or as part of a combination regimen consistent with the approved indications and the majority of events had a fatal outcome. The median duration of therapy in patients who developed MDS AML was approximately two years, range less than six months to greater than four years. All of these patients had previous chemotherapy with platinum agents and or other DNA damaging agents, including radiotherapy. In SOLO1, patients with newly diagnosed advanced BRCAM ovarian cancer, the incidence of MDS AML was 1.9%, 5 of 260 in patients who received Linparza, and 0.8%, 1 of 130 in patients who received placebo based on an updated analysis. In Paolo 1, of patients with newly diagnosed advanced ovarian cancer with HRD positive status, the incidence of MDS AML was 1.6%, 4 of 255, in patients who received Linparza, and 2.3%, 3 of 131, in the control arm. In Solo 2, patients with BRCAM platinum sensitive relapsed ovarian cancer, the incidence of MDS AML was 8%. 15 of 195 in patients who received Linparza and 4%, 4 of 99 in patients who received placebo. The duration of Linparza treatment prior to the diagnosis of MDS AML ranged from 0.6 years to 4.5 years. Do not start Linparza until patients have recovered from hematological toxicity caused by previous chemotherapy, less than or equal to grade one. Monitor complete blood count for cytopenia at baseline and monthly thereafter for clinically significant changes during treatment. For prolonged hematological toxicities, interrupt Linparza and monitor blood counts weekly until recovery. If the levels have not recovered to grade one or less after four weeks, refer the patient to a hematologist for further investigations, including bone marrow analysis and blood sample for cytogenetics. Discontinue Linparza if MDS AML is confirmed. Pneumonitis, including severe and fatal cases, has occurred in patients treated with Linparza. In clinical studies, among patients who received Linparza as a single agent or as part of a combination regimen, the incidence of pneumonitis, including fatal cases, was 1.0%, 29 of 2,851. If patients present with new or worsening respiratory symptoms such as dyspnea, cough, and fever, or a radiological abnormality occurs, interrupt Linparza treatment and promptly assess the source of the symptoms. If pneumonitis is confirmed, discontinue Linparza treatment and treat the patient appropriately. Venous thromboembolism, VTE, including severe or fatal pulmonary embolism, PE, occurred in patients treated with Linparza. Monitor patients for signs and symptoms of venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism and treat as medically appropriate, which may include long-term anticoagulation as clinically indicated. Hepatotoxicity, including drug-induced liver injury, DILI. Hepatotoxicity, including severe and potentially fatal cases of DILI, has occurred in patients treated with Linparza. Evaluate bilirubin and transaminases at baseline and throughout treatment with Linparza. For patients who develop abnormal liver tests after Linparza, monitor more frequently for liver test abnormalities and clinical signs and symptoms of hepatic toxicity. 
if DILI is suspected, withhold Linparza. Upon confirmation of DILI, discontinue Linparza. Embryo-fetal toxicity. Based on its mechanism of action and findings in animals, Linparza can cause fetal harm. Verify pregnancy status in females of reproductive potential prior to initiating treatment. Females. Advise females of reproductive potential of the potential risk to a fetus and to use effective contraception during treatment and for six months following the last dose. Adverse reactions. First line maintenance BRCAM advanced ovarian cancer. Most common adverse reactions, all grades, in greater than or equal to 10% of patients who received Linparza in the first line maintenance setting for Solo 1 were nausea, 77%, fatigue, 67%, abdominal pain, 45%, vomiting 40%, anemia 38%, diarrhea 37%, constipation 28%, upper respiratory tract infection, influenza, nasopharyngitis, bronchitis 28%, dyskusia 26%, decreased appetite 20%, dizziness 20%, neutropenia 17%, dyspepsia 17%, dyspnea 15%, leukopenia 13%, urinary tract infection 13%, thrombocytopenia 11%, and stomatitis 11%. Most common laboratory abnormalities, grades one through four, in greater than or equal to 25% of patients who received Linparza in the first line maintenance setting for Solo 1 were decrease in hemoglobin 87%, increase in mean corpuscular volume 87%, decrease in leukocytes 70%, Decrease in lymphocytes, 67%. Decrease in absolute neutrophil count, 51%. Decrease in platelets, 35%. And increase in serum creatinine, 34%. Drug interactions. Anti-cancer agents. Clinical studies of Linparza with other myelosuppressive anti-cancer agents, including DNA damaging agents, indicate a potentiation and prolongation of myelosuppressive toxicity. CYP3A inhibitors. Avoid co-administration of strong or moderate CYP3A inhibitors when using Linparza. If a strong or moderate CYP3A inhibitor must be co-administered, reduce the dose of Linparza. Advise patients to avoid grapefruit, grapefruit juice, Seville oranges, and Seville orange juice during Linparza treatment. CYP3A inducers. Avoid co-administration of strong or moderate CYP3A inducers when using Linparza. Use in specific populations. Lactation. No data are available regarding the presence of olaparib in human milk, its effects on the breastfed infant or on milk production. Because of the potential for serious adverse reactions in the breastfed infant, advise a lactating woman not to breastfeed during treatment with Linparza and for one month after receiving the final dose. Pediatric use. The safety and efficacy of Linparza have not been established in pediatric patients. Hepatic impairment. No adjustment to the starting dose is required in patients with mild or moderate hepatic impairment. Child pew classification A and B. There are no data in patients with severe hepatic impairment. Child pew classification C. Renal impairment. No dosage modification is recommended in patients with mild renal impairment. CLCR 51 through 80 milliliters per minute estimated by Cockcroft Galt. In patients with moderate renal impairment, CLCR 31 to 50 milliliters per minute, reduce the dose of Linparza to 200 milligrams twice daily. There are no data in patients with severe renal impairment or end-stage renal disease. CLCR less than or equal to 30 milliliters per minute. Please see complete prescribing information, including medication guide at the URL shown on the screen. You are encouraged to report side effects related to AstraZeneca products by calling 1-800-236-9933. If you prefer to report these to the FDA, please call 1-800-FDA-1088. Thank you for your time. I hope you found the information presented to be useful to your clinical practice.